I'm right, just go. looking at this video. So, like, how many we good? Yeah, okay. So, how many times have you bought fruit and it either molds like immediately, like overnight, or you cut into it and there's like it's just like funky on the inside. Like, I've had okay. the avocado before where it was like rubbery. I've had onions where I cut through the onion and it was like molding on the inside or like I like. All I know is I threw it out. I didn't eat it. It's 110% because of gene editing, bro, and the fruits and vegetables. I'm, I 110% agree. I had this. I, when you said, bro, I want to talk to you about fruit, I literally already knew what you were going to say because I had this conversation with my dad the other day. He got um, he got a mango and he just realized like it's like wasn't like a mango. And then once he got that distorted mango, he started realizing like, dang. The oranges aren't the same. Like you, when you cut into an orange, it's like dried out on the inside or it tastes like medicine. It tastes funky. It doesn't taste like how an orange used to taste. And, and, and you know, people will be like, oh, well, maybe you could just go try a different type of orange or different or, or organic or something like that. We already are. We've tried different, different types of oranges from different produce stores. It's all weird right now, bro. I don't all know. All of it. How many times have you how many times have you opened up a lemon, right? You're making a dish, I don't know, whatever the dish is. You open up a lemon and you go to squeeze it and like a tiny drop comes out. Like Yeah, see the thing is, well, you're right, bro. It's like not a lot of juice in them. Like they're just mm -hmm. not the same, bro. Watermelon isn't the same tasting way anymore. It's it's and it's also too, I think what it has to do a lot with is our state. We live in California. So I feel like and again, I don't want to get conspiratorial, but I feel like California is one of those testing states. You know what I mean? 100% for sure it is. And I would say, based on what I know about the seedless fruits, do yourself a favor and do not eat no seedless watermelon, bro. Don't eat yeah. that. It's all, it's, all, it's all gene edited and bioengineered. Bro, or remember when we were kids, right? And we would run the streets, pulling up on water hoses and drinking water. And then like watermelons were real, bro. The big black seeds. And you know what I mean? It rarely had even a white seed in there, but they were all filled with big black seeds. And now all the watermelon is seedless, no black seeds. It's wild. But yeah, man. <clears throat> I agree. Not to open up the conversation with the dark, I know. With the dark I just, entry, I just, but I agree with you 110%, man. <laughs> Something's definitely going on in the fruit. I, I see videos on Twitter all the time of people like cutting open watermelons and the watermelons just like you can't even break it. It's like rubber. That's wild, bro. Yeah, that's what I just seen with, with, with some avocado. So I don't. I don't like jumping into the realm of conspiracy conspiracy theory. So I hate talking about subjects that I don't have like pulled up documents on, you know, because I like I'm the type of researcher or type of individual that when I'm saying stuff to people or I'm trying to educate people about something, I like to have some sort of backing with me. And that 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 topic right there is such a rabbit hole that would need to be 100 percent dug a little bit deeper. Yeah, we could probably do, we could do that, too, actually, one we day. Probably we could. probably sh we we could. should. Yeah. Dude, the video that you shared in the chat just the other day with the water, I know that we're not going to be able to talk about that because yeah, yeah, yeah. video completely get taken down. But um, wow, 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 wow. Like I, I my heart is my heart is racing right now thinking about it, bro. Oh my it's god. It's scary. Yeah, it's a trip, bro. It's a trip. Yeah, man. It, Dude, yeah. There's so much. There's so much people don't know. And it's almost like this enlightenment has come with my transformation, with my financial gain and my health being relatively good and 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 always progressing. Like this just enlightenment that I myself have gone through after getting out of the military. And I'm sure you can can relate to this, bro, but it's like holy crap the stuff that people don't know simply because they're just not reading like i was i was looking at a forbes study and it said that 65 percent of the american population has never ever finished a book oh my god Seven, it's like 78 percent of the population will only ever read 12 pages of a book and then stop reading it and it's like 85 percent of the population or something crazy lacks financial literacy that's Dang. nuts. That's super I mean, nuts. 
It is super nuts. I mean, again, the statistics probably change from research paper to research paper, but wow, man, yeah. age of enlightenment is upon us. And it's, it gets, it's shake it. Like sometimes I get shaky at how ignorant our civilization is becoming. 100%. I lose confidence every now and then for sure. Just cause it's, it's wild, man. And then you see like how no one's really getting set up for success, like going through school systems either, you know what I mean? To come out to the, to the chaos that we've, you know, learned to conquer. But I mean, yo, like <laughs> there is nothing setting you up unless you got good parents. You know how you can tell that this is all a matrix because only the few 1% of individuals have actually benefited from the technology that we have now at our fingertips, like artificial intelligence, pretty much super robot phones that can do anything in the world for us, give us a college level education in 30 seconds instead of spending $50,000 annually on a, a you know degree. <laughs> And it's weird how now amongst the general population, it's almost as if people have become uh, dumber. Like it's almost as if people have lost their intelligence. It's like, yeah, we have all these outstanding technological advancement at our, advancements at our fingertips, but are people really, really using them? Like, yeah, they're benefiting from them, but we're not flourishing. There's too many people suffering right now. Why is that? Bro. You and I, and I know, speak my I speak for myself, but I know a lot of other people can relate. COVID-19 was a blessing. Getting locked down for those two years was so life-changing. I realized so many different things. It's, this is leading me to the opening questions that I wanted to talk about before we jump into DeFi. But it's like, so much great stuff happened. Yeah, it was a lot of negativity, but I used all that negativity to feed it and turn it into positive energy, positive outcomes. Um, one of my most favorite authors, Napoleon Hill, said that with every great crisis comes great opportunity. And that stuck with me all throughout the crisis, or it comes with it the seed of an equivalent and equal opportunity, just to phrase him correctly. But still, same concept. And so... <laughs> I wanted to ask you, like, what is, what is, what are you looking forward to in all of this? Like, not necessarily the end goal, but just moving forward with this transformation that we know for a fact is happening. When it's all going to unfold, who knows, but we know it's happening. Like, what is it that you're really looking forward to in this? You know, that's a good question. And, I'm going to just say immediately what came to my heart and my soul, and I'm already doing it right now, right? But I come from Section 8, food stamps. That's where I come from. You know what I'm saying? That's what my that's what my my mom and her choice of husband, husband that's what the best that they could do, right? You know, fast forward, I've made a name of myself. I have a business, multiple businesses, loving family understanding that nobody taught me anything but what i want to do now is give back everything to my children i got i got four kids and i want to give back this knowledge to them because the defi knowledge is the future and this is what's like let's face it man like houses in california are ridiculous to buy right now like most people are not going to be able to even stay in California. You know what I mean? So it's like giving back to my family tree and not just leaving my family tree. And then hopefully my kids can give back to their peers in their time when their time comes like I'm doing now. It's just all about giving this knowledge back because it's so empowerful. It's so it, it, it's it's so powerful in what it could do for someone's life um and what i've seen it do to my life in the past year and a half so it it yeah man i i don't need much to to be happy you know what i mean like right now i'm happy you know what i mean so more money is gonna you know enable me to maybe do more things yeah that's cool but like i'm happy and my yeah. ultimate goal is to give all this knowledge back to my children yeah yeah i i, I mean 
You're capitalizing on the transformation, man, and the, the transfer of wealth. A lot of people think that this transfer of wealth, they had this lottery fixed mindset going into all this because of moon boy hypus, but then reality kind of sets in and they're like, oh, okay, it's been, it's day 892 and we haven't seen these thousand dollar price predictions come into fruition yet, yet, right? <laughs> so people start to wake up and are starting to wake up and I'm going to show some of that research today that people are starting to realize that you should be growing the entire time not just waiting for opportunity. You should be scaling bags, growing portfolios, growing your wealth, learning new things, networking with people, making new businesses, taking a proactive approach the entire time, not just waiting around like all these sad, sorry people are doing. And it's unfortunate that the vast majority of crypto enthusiasts are doing exactly that. They're just sitting around waiting, doing nothing productive. And I'm not saying that they're not gonna be successful by any means necessary stacking, you're being patient, you're ignoring people, you're keeping your head down. I get that approach as well. But if you really want to 10X yourself, you really want to 20X yourself, 50X yourself, you need to be grinding. You need to be freaking pumping out whatever is going to get you paid. Again, not financial advice. So you can scale yourself. Money is a tool to expand your potential on this earth. And when you understand that power, Again, understanding the science of getting rich, it's it's normal law. It's like normal physical law. Like what you give out is what you get back. You have two people, one that's super active, one that's super into things, one that's researching, one that's growing, one that's learning, one that's expanding, and one that's just sitting in a corner, putting some dipping their toe in here, dipping their toe in there, being a conservative, being a little scared and timid. Who's going to prosper more at the end of the year? That's what it comes down to. And so um, I think that this whole entire transformation that we've gone through over the past couple of years, listening to it, and I'm going to show you guys all the, exa all the examples today. If you guys stick around for the entirety of this call, I have documents showing all of this stuff that's happening. It's not me making this up. Over the last four years, we have seen pain, suffering, and agony from the vast majority of individuals on this planet. But if you actually go look at the pipelines, you actually go look at the plumbing, you go look at the infrastructure behind the scenes, it has been flourishing. Developments have been happening. Hiring has been happening. Job growth has been, has been unfolding in a brand new sector. I'm not talking about job growth on a global scale because, yeah, we have economies that are suffering. For example, the UK economy is pulling back. It's cooling down. The Eurozone is pulling back. It's cooling down. U.S. economy is still strong, but in different sectors and different niches, for example, the digital niche, the Web3 niche, the crypto economy, the blockchain industry, it's been thriving. It's been thriving behind the scenes. Everybody, th everybody thought it was dead. Everybody thought crypto was going to go away. No, no, not even one single little tiny bit. And there's people that are tapped in, don't get me wrong, but 99% of the human population right now has no idea that a new plumbing of our financial infrastructure is being laid right now. It's ready to go. Right now, literally, regulation, give or take, is probably the last cherry on top, and that's coming in the next two, three years. Full. Facts. Um, just to capitalize on what you said about coming from nothing, look at this. 50% of Americans say that they view fast food. Actually, I don't even want to. I want to I'm a full circle to this because you had some stuff to talk about. Let's take a break. Let's cool off. Let's shout out to everybody that's listening yeah, in because yeah. we get deep, we get deep quick and we lose ourselves. I know. Well, <laughs> dude, let me show you this. All right. So like this is what I came across. What yesterday I made a video on it. I wasn't able to upload it to my YouTube page because my well, the system I'm using was tripping. But anyways, let me share with you all what I found. All right. Let me just show you guys why DeFi is the now it is the future and yeah hold on one second here one second um while he's finding that information real quick 350 people blessings to you guys hopefully you had a good week we're gonna tap in myself mr Akko. you know we're gonna do our DeFi thing i'm gonna try and squeeze in full circling some market information in there you know why the market's pulled back give you guys a quick market update i want to then try to roll into this digital disruption and just show you all proof is in the pudding that the researchers have been correct the entire time 
And I'm going to show you physical examples of that, that industry adoption is coming, that this new financial system that myself and Mr. Aqua and many other researchers are talking, telling you guys about, trying to create a sense of awareness about, it's happening. And it's going to be finally integrated into the back end financial system. And it's not us telling you that. It's large market participants, it's governmental organizations, it's central bankers. And I got all that for you all. So once we do that, we're going to transition. We're going to show you all a little bit of the growth in the DeFi ecosystem that's been happening in projects that we are interested in. I want you guys to keep that in mind. We may hold these digital assets. We may like these digital assets, and that might be completely different from your taste or your risk approach, whatever the case may be. Remember, we have separately designed DeFi strategies, completely separate from our long-term bags. We have a mentality that's keeping us alive and afloat in this DeFi and crypto ecosystem. So anything that we say, again, it's not financial advice. It is what we're paying attention to. You don't have to pay attention to. We are here as individuals sharing market information, trying and attempting to enlighten individuals and provide education and value. And what you all decide to do with that is up to you. We're not here to convince you. Okay. Um, so shout out to you guys tapping in, listening in. Make sure that you go follow Mr. Aqua if you are one of my followers. And if you're one of Mr. Aqua's followers, do me a favor. Right. Absolutely. Anybody? And uh, let's tap in. Go ahead, Aqua. Take it away, bro. Yeah. So I came across this article that basically revealed that a U.S. congressman by the name of Mike Collins recently disclosed his $15,000 purchase of Velodrome. Now, what is Velodrome? It's a small altcoin that is a DEX that you can basically deploy your assets on and get return yield. Now, as I was reading this article, I was thinking to myself, of all projects, of all the projects in the world right now, there's how many projects right now in crypto that most of them are going to go to zero. And this U.S. congressman decided to purchase Velodrome. Mm -hmm. I'm and like, we know why. And I'm like, I know why. So let me show you why. And I'm pretty sure he's very aware. So like these guys are definitely tapped in. Like, think about it. Like, it, it, <laughs> let me show you guys what Velodrome is. This is a DEX where you can get return on your assets. This is mm -hmm. stuff that we talk about inside the club. I'm not going to dive in, make this a training, but this is what Mr. Mike Collins purchased. $129 million is locked up on this deck. I think he knows a little something, right? Bro, I'm about to, hold on. I want to capitalize on what you said. I'm just trying to find it because do you remember like three weeks ago, right? Velo had, or uh, Velodrome, they were hitting massive amounts of progress, right? Massive amounts of progress. Facts. And so, and it doesn't matter which way you look at it. It doesn't matter if this, if, if, he was specifically talking about Velodrome, correct? They bought he bought Velodrome and not Velo. Yeah, Velodrome Finance, exactly. Okay, so what you guys have to understand is that how much did he buy? What? How much did you say he bought? It disclosed fifteen thousand dollars worth, but I guarantee, like, I don't know, I'm not going to make any. Which is a test. Anymore. It's that was a test. Whatever, yeah. whatever money he used, it was a test. Okay. Facts. They are gonna they are gonna start to test this stuff through these individuals that sit at the head of these organizations because they're allowed, to, they can get involved. I have a video clip that was shared amongst the CyberX researchers. I can, I'll go through it. I can find it if you guys remind me on this call where financial institutions went on to confirm that they test on meme coins. Yeah. Yeah. That video is from like two months ago. But anyways, I agree with you 110%, bro. I was trying to find the, the, thing that I was trying to pull up on Twitter, but I can't find it. But yeah, they're earning yield. They're, they they know that the old way of traditional investing is dead. It is. It is. And yeah, so I just wanted, I, I you know, I have a whole video I'm going to be dropping on this topic, but like, yo, like, come on now again. And this guy, not that age is a factor. I mean, this guy is like, you know, an, an older guy too. You know what I mean? It's not common to have this knowledge. So I know he knows something if I had to make a guesstimate. Um, and then this is what I wanted to shed some spotlight on as well, because I don't think people really realize what the Bitcoin ETF did, right? And like what came from that. So this right here on Trading View says big break coming for Ethereum DeFi. Here's the reason. It says the decentralized finance sector within the Ethereum network is poised for a major breakthrough. The projection is based on recent observations within the ecosystem. 
and the broader cryptocurrency space. Renowned analyst and co-founder of Something Capital, Ryan Watkins asserts that the current setup for Ethereum DeFi is the strongest it's ever been since 2020. And they go on to talk about like how much money is locked up, which is like around a hundred billion right now, right? But th this ETF, they're saying that th that's going to basically pour more water into the DeFi sector. And then let me show you how and why, right? So like this is another thing. Let me show y'all. So yield max ETFs. Basically, when BTC became an ETF, now you have this Bitcoin option ETF where basically people are deploying their liquidity onto different platforms like Fidelity and E-Trade, and they're earning a 84% return on their money right now. So that's what the Bitcoin ETFs did. So, And before the Bitcoin ETFs came out, here on YieldMax ETFs, Bitcoin was not on this list. So I can only imagine once the ETFs for Ethereum do get approved, we will see an option here on the yield max ETFs as well. So this this DeFi sec sector is only growing. It's becoming massive. Like and it's going to just get even more massive. I mean, Bro, uh, Ripple put out a um, Ripple put out a article about this the other day. They are, are in that piece. I don't remember who specifically um where they pulled the research from but in the piece from ripple.com it mentioned how they're projecting the DeFi ecosystem to surpass 600 billion by 2030 and so it's like when you when you understand that growth and where we could potentially go between now and then it's only right to focus on it like if you want to remember i had to revert back to the full conversation to the people that were on the beginning of this call now is the time to grow. Now is not the time to be stagnant. Everybody thinks now is the time to be buying and hodling and sitting back and being not productive and like just joining on calls because all they talk about is high XRP price. Like I get that one day. Sure. Absolutely. I'm hundred percent for it. I got long-term bags packed, ready to go. I'm ready for a hundred dollar price prediction on XRP. Just like y'all I've been holding XRP like since 2017 and other digital assets. I get that. I get that vision. Trust me. But it's, the, it's time to take the freaking brainwashing goggles off and look behind the curtains and see all the opportunities that the institutions and the elites, i.e., like you just said, the congressmen and women that have been trading stocks your entire lifetime, they're about to get into this asset class. You understand that, right? I hope people do. I know that it's it's not hitting like there's 555 people on this call. It'll only hit like 150. I hope it hits everybody, but I know that some people will just fly right over their heads. You have an opportunity. You understand. They are not here yet. They are not here yet. I will say that again. They are not here yet. These institutions, these larger players than you and I that have been manipulating markets since most likely before you've been alive on this planet are coming to crypto. And you are going to miss out on opportunities <laughs> if you don't wake up and start finding out what they are. Okay? And Velodrome is 110% one of those opportunities in the now. I'm not saying it's going to be around 10 years from the, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, but it's a it's a vehicle that I myself have used. I know Aqua's used. I know some other people in the Wealth 28 Club have used it. I'm not sitting here saying we're still using it or that we plan on it, but we have used it. And it is a tool to grow your wealth, to be your own bank. Put money into a liquidity pool, understanding the risk properly, and obviously, of course, assessing that risk properly, so you can grow your wealth. One hundred. I, I don't know how 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 else clear to make it. It's crazy, and you can see people like this gentleman here, the congressman, buying Velodrome, fifteen grand worth. And I know that that's not a lot of money. Remember, I think it's a test. That's a little baby, but you can go look on DeFi Llama, or even on Crystal which is a, a application in the DeFi's ecosystem that you can use to see, you know, different metrics in DeFi. And you can see that some of the biggest accounts that have money locked in DeFi is millions of dollars, like millions of dollars, $250 million locked in one DeFi position. And that one DeFi position is earning 110% APR. Imagine, imagine earning 200 on on 250 million dollars 110 percent per year that is happening right now yeah 100 percent. people are definitely capitalizing man like dude like and y'all should be too and that's the reason like i just wanted to show this part of the article 
here at the bottom correlates with the trading view article that came out as far as ethereum spot etfs are key factors that are going to bring more liquidity to the ecosystem so it's right in front of our faces like i'll be honest with everyone that's here six months ago a year ago DeFi was not being spoke about on this level and then the amount of articles that are coming out now it's every single day there's like oodles and oodles of articles talking strictly DeFi. so here's here's the thing investors are always investors are always seeking the next big opportunity the next like 10x 20x 30x opportunity but they don't want to ever take the risk or do the research to find out what it is DeFi is one of those things that if you get involved properly, you educate yourself the right way and you take calculated risk, it could, again, not financial advice, for me, it's benefiting me and it could possibly benefit you if you take the right measures, right? You have to get educated. You have to start somewhere. You have to start reading. You have to start doing the research that we're doing, showing you these documents. You think we're sitting here and the, the videos that I make on YouTube watching hour long panel discussions that have 12 views to just get those little tiny 30 second gems of these bankers and these these financial institutions telling you all that they're invested in DeFi doesn't take time it 110% takes time but if i didn't start to do that research 6 months to a year ago to progress myself in my investing and trading career i'd have never known about DeFi like it wouldn't have been even a thing on my brain because the information wave wouldn't have hit me that's what I'm trying to convey to people right now is like we have so much access at our fingertips, yet the vast amount of individuals are brainless zombies. Let me just prove to you all I'm not making this up. Okay. Can I can I can I jump yeah, yeah, in? Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Let me let me let me stop quick? sharing my screen. Okay, so check this out. I'm not making this up. I want everybody to, to understand that about CyperX, myself, Aqua, Mr. Man, and some of the other mentors that we have here in CyperX. What you have noticed most likely about our research is when we say things, when we give projections, when we give data, it's usually based off of someone with more credentials than us. So that way, you know, we're more so accurate than somebody that's just waking up in the morning trying to be an influencer telling y'all for no fucking reason that XRP is going to go to a thousand dollars. Like, we will never tell you that XRP is going to go to $1,000 without having something that supports that idea. And I get that there is. I'm not. I'm just giving you an example, right? <laughs> it's just irritating that you'll go and you'll watch these YouTubers that have thousands, hundreds of thousands of views and followers, but can't even pick apart a document from a bank. How does that even make sense? And those are the people that they trust with their price predictions and whatnot. It's gnarly, man. This this whole entire crypto space is backwards. That's why I keep saying that we're in the age of a transformation amongst influencers where you're starting to see these deep researchers like myself and Mr. Man, our views are starting to grow. People are starting to tap into the real research and not the bull crap that got everybody wrecked in the last cycles. That's real. So check this out. Okay. Um, I'm not the one telling you all that the vast majority of the population does not know about this. This is a gentleman. This is from a video six months ago, November 30th, 2023. So it's within the last year only has 104 views. Okay. And we got, um, Paul Ryan, vice chairman at Tineo, former speaker of the U S house of representatives. So that's who you're going to be listening to a former speaker of the U S house of representatives. He's sitting on stage with the BIS. He's sitting on stage with a representative from city and who was in this room, governmental organizations, central banks, the largest organizations, the government shadow organizations that all run the financial system. You can go look this event up yourself. You can see the speakers. You can see the attendees. I'm not making this up. Okay. Listen to what he says. He goes on to say, it's not, a I'm going to play the video for you, but he says, it's not a choice. We're in an election year. You don't have a choice to adopt this new technology or not. And he talks about how the vast majority of individuals have no idea that this is actually happening. Okay. Listen, let me play the video for you guys. Mm -hmm. Let's turn it up. Can you hear it? No. Gary, give me one second. <laughs> so 
leaders and governments alike. Yeah. Sweet. How did we get here? As we talk about the digitization of money, how did it get so politicized? How does the technology get so politicized? It's easy politics. Uh, well, first of all, it's it's we're going into an election year. <laughs> There's that, uh, but it's it's easy politics. And the politics come from a good place, I would say, the, the populism. It comes from a pro-privacy, pro-freedom place. So that's good. Uh, but it's it's such an un it's such a misunderstood technology. Very few people know what it is, how it works, what it does. Um, a lot of people think it's a choice as to whether this is going to happen or not. It's not. Uh, and and the politics. Yo! Y'all, not. <laughs> he just told you it ain't no choice. There's you don't have a choice. There's no choice here. You will, you will, you will adopt these technologies. 100. Okay. Hold on. This is very simple for, for ambitious populists. So the question is, can you see through this particular moment, the Overton window as we describe it? I think the answer is yes, because the inevitability of this technology is here. As an American, uh, I want to see our, our reserve currency um, status continue. Uh, and that means we have to stay on top of this and ahead of this and help um, the world as a, as a conservative of the classical liberal variant, meaning a limited government, free market, individual rights you know, advocate. I want to make sure that the free world, free societies have their values protected inside the architecture of this as it is deployed across the world. OK, so let's pause and think about this. He's a former House, House member, House member representative. OK. Mr. Aqua just told you that a congressperson just invested in a digital asset in the DeFi space that could earn him yield right now if he decided to deploy that asset. This gentleman just told you that the digital transformation is happening and they're fighting for a free society. That means, again, the ability for you to be your own bank and generate this income. Like, like there are people fighting for this on the inside. Trust me, there are. They just will never broadcast this to you in the mainstream. They're never going to show you this video. I just this video has 104 views. Okay, you think CNN is going to come out right and tell you this is happening? You don't have a choice. No, they're not going to play this video for you. It it gets it's it gets crazier. So to to solidify why I even started playing this video, he tells you all that the most the vast majority of people don't even know that this exists. Okay, check this out. So you're going to have authoritarian regimes deploy their versions of this, and the question is, can the free world uh, stay ahead of this? and protect our critical values, privacy, freedom, liberty, security. And and that's where this populism comes from. So I'm actually, I'm a little shocked at how it got out of control, but honestly, it's really not as big as you think. If you walk around the state of Wisconsin and pull people in the street, they don't know what the hell you're talking about. Mm -hmm. so, you know, it's just, it's just sort of catnip for people who are running for a- Okay. You walk around the state of uh, Wisconsin and pull people in the street. They don't know what you're talking about. Go try it out for yourself. I've told people this. Go to Walmart. Go to Walmart. Go to the lowest income earning section of your local jurisdiction and pull somebody and be like, hey, go to the dollar store in America. Get somebody that's in line buying bubble gum. Ask them if they know about crypto. They're probably going to tell you no. And if they do know about crypto, they know about Dogecoin, Bitcoin, and Ethereum. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Now, now, another thing that he mentioned is that it's coming. It's inevitable. And that most people, again, won't understand it. Look at this. Industry adoption. This is a document that's from this year. Shout out to the CyberX research team. Okay. This is from the USDF consortium, tokenizing banking. And look at what it says right here. It says, in many cases, customers, i.e. people, everybody, the retail, may never know that blockchain is being used to power their experience behind payments. They don't want, they don't, you don't need to know the normal part. The normal person does not need to know that this, that XRP exists because nah. it's not, for, because it's not for retail. It's not for retail. That's the thing that people are understanding. When retail comes into the market, the first digital asset that they get introduced to is not XRP. It's most likely a meme coin. Meme okay. coins are, are more for retail, you know? And so that's another thing people need to understand is, is it's, <laughs> it's about to be integrated in such a way. <laughs> <laughs> that that it, but people aren't going to know. They're not going to yeah. know if their payments being, you know, processed at their Starbucks through blockchain and DLT. They're not going to care. Um. So, anyways, I'll let you. I'll let you have the floor back. But I, I wanted to share that. Yeah. No. Nah, that's that's uh. That is 
solid bro like and nobody knows that <laughs> really here in california too you know at all like i've spent some time at my water store and just talking with people because when i do work my at my water store i'll have like crypto videos going on while i'm helping the customers so i'm like what is this and i'm like it's crypto you don't know nothing about that nah what is that <laughs> yeah so, and i mean the even sadder part is in a sense is like I, I talk about this quite often, um, but education obviously, of course, comes first. But just understanding what cycle we're in and understand, like, seeing from an outside perspective, most people are suffering. Why is that? Why is that in, a, in an age of transformation, most people are suffering? You can see it in the statistics. Like this one, for example, fifty percent of Americans say they view fast food as a luxury because they're struggling financially. Right? What? Okay, but you know. It, you're, you can see documents like this. Look, everyone with a mobile connection can now participate in this groundbreaking new financial system. This is not from me. This is not me telling you all this. This is, geez, the Reserve Bank of India. Hmm, I don't know. Maybe you should probably pay attention. But again, right, who's, re right. who's reading these documents? Cyprex researchers are. How do we come across the ability to generate yield off of your cell phone? My cell phone right now, passive income, is making me like four racks a, a month facts myself included guys so i'm not yeah <laughs> i'm a little bit north of it but yeah we I'm, I'm not trying to brag i'm not trying to brag holy crap guys i'm trying to show you all information look at this it's not me telling you all that this was possible it's it, it's the reserve bank of in india simultaneously a related repo repository for only rbi regulated entities banks and uh on their adoption of emerging technologies like artificial intelligence machine learning cloud computing dlt quantum right it's telling you all what's happening it's telling you all that every single person with a mobile connection can connect to this, right? I showed you all a video of Loretta Joseph saying the same exact thing, right? This was last week. <clears throat> I don't know if you guys can <clears throat> see my screen, but no, nah, no, nah, and maybe if I'm sharing it. But when you did, when you were, um, when you had left your vid the video and you were looking at a document or reading from a document, it didn't pop up for us. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's why you gotta stop me, bro, so I can share screen. My bad. I didn't like you were rapping, like, and what you were saying was like cooking. So I didn't want to interrupt the sauce. Here's here's Loretta. Here's the document from the RBI Reserve Bank of India right here, telling you that everyone with a mobile connection can tap into this, right? But yet here, fifty percent of Americans are struggling, and I'm full circle. This is because people are not educating themselves properly. They they're scared, bro. They're 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 timid. Like, <laughs> and and I just <clears throat> go ahead. No, one hundred percent. They're scared. Like I see it every day now too on Twitter, you know, because you know I know all like all of my content is usually just DeFi related, so I get you know the 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 comments every now and then or every day as a matter of fact as far as like just fear fear based emotional comments. Um, when we're just here trying to educate, I'm just trying to spread awareness. You know what I mean? I'm not saying to take your whole bag and deploy it onto these dexes and risk it all. Like nah, but like this is an option to make some sort of passive income. I mean, what if you could take a thousand bucks, not financial advice, but if you could take a thousand bucks of your money right now, that was just in your savings account and then have that work for you to make you $3,000 for the whole year. And then it pays you out in monthly payments or daily payments, depending on, you know, what decks you choose. I mean, why would you not want to try that? Why would you not participate in something like that? Right? So, you know, impermanent loss, like let's talk about impermanent loss for just a tad bit because this week has been an interesting week. You know, my portfolio, just like everyone else here that's tapped in with us right now, is taking a massive pullback right now, right? Bleeding. So I'm in permanent loss right now. If I sold all my portfolio right now, I would have permanent loss, right? So right now, my portfolio is sitting in impermanent loss until I hit that sell button. But I have conviction in my whole portfolio. I have conviction in all the projects that are in my portfolio. So, yeah. you know, you know what another good thing too, though, bro, I'm going to stop sharing just to pick up what you're talking about. Another good thing too about our community is we know why we're in a pullback. We, we know what phase of market structure we're in. We're not confused. Let me show you guys live examples of what it is that I'm talking about. Like, um, I, I'm not talking crap about this individual. I don't know him personally, and I have an and I have an example of 
one of his tweets in my post. And I just know that he's an XRP community member, but he he tweeted out the other day. Can you see my screen? Hold on. Uh, hold on. I have to do the restroom real quick. Hold on. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah. See, I see Loretta. I don't know if you're showing the Loretta video. All right. Wait, now well, while, you're, <laughs> while you're going to the restroom, I'm going to go to the, I don't like, I don't like, um, actually, no, I'm not because I don't, I don't want to, I don't like Twitter drama or anything like that. I don't want to be involved in none of that stuff. But there was a uh, influencer the other day that posted or two weeks ago that posted, you know, why, why is XRP price down? You know, why is XRP price down? What the heck is, what the heck is the market down for? Then they just didn't know. And I've been trying to explain to you all on the X space with my fundamental analysis and my understanding of the markets, having been a market participant for the past nine years now, well, going on nine years, I mean, nine years in October. Um, like, it's not hard to understand why and what phase of market structure we're in. And I, and I broadcast all of this to you guys publicly. You know, um, I put out on the X space just the other day, you know, talking about why the dollar strong fundamentally breaking it down for you guys. We went over how a couple of weeks ago, like you can go look at this in the charts. The charts tell you everything. Here, when the market started pulling back in this area in May, okay, this was primarily due to some upbeat US economic data. We had stronger PMI figures. And that showed that the business activity and growth that accelerated in May, right? Well, from April to May. And a lot of people don't understand those macroeconomics, those factors that drive sentiment for certain currencies. So think about it. If major jurisdictions all over the globe are slightly cooling off, you got economic, not necessarily turmoil, but an economic cool down and slowdown in the Eurozone and the UK in China, right? In Japan and all these jurisdictions, but you got the US economy still thriving and still showing business growth activity, especially in the PMI sector, then what are investors with much more money than you and I going to want to do they're going to want to reallocate their capital into something that's strong, something that's healthy, something that's resilient. And for that sake, that was the US dollar. Go look at the same exact time that the dollar bottomed out and started to flip bullish. You can go see this stuff yourself. It's the same exact time that crypto just recently started experiencing its pullback. Moving into the beginning of June, we had that upbeat NFP figure from the US front. That showed strength in the US labor market, right? Then following that next week, Investor sentiment was extremely optimistic in risk assets because we, we saw lower inflation readings. The CPI and PPI came out with a slight decline, showing some slight disinflation last week. But the Federal Reserve came out in their meeting, super well, not necessarily super hawkish because they didn't say anything about a rate hike, but they came out moderately hawkish, pushing back rate cut hopes and saying to the market that they're going to need to, to keep interest rates higher for longer, for a prolonged period of time to to fight sticky and troublesome inflation. And this, this changed investor sentiment. This, this changed market participation where investors started allocating into dollars and started taking profit from risk assets even further than they were at the beginning of June and at the end of May. Then yesterday, I showed you guys, I physically put this post out to you guys in advance, right? I want you guys to see this. So let's go to my page. Look how easy this is. Okay, this is how we've been gauging the markets here at CyperX. So you can see that this post was from 18 hours ago. So it was before the news came out today. Okay, a full fundamental breakdown and a digest talking about what flash PMIs are, why PMIs are important, giving our team an entire fundamental breakdown so that they understand what phase of market structure we're in, walking them through scenarios, what we would need to see to see a risk asset recovery. Let's read this and let's just dive in. Look at this. Okay. So for a dollar bull situation and risk asset bear situation, I said, be prepared to react if we see upbeat PMI figures indicating continued strength in the U.S. economy. And remember, I put this out before the news. Yeah. I, said, strong, I said stronger PMI figures would likely result in a continued strength in the U.S. dollar and further declines in risk assets. This is because robust economic data suggests a resilient U.S. economy. And I gave the whole breakdown, right? Now go look at this. Look at this. Look at what freaking happened today in crypto. Remember, I gave that breakdown to you guys publicly in advance, but I typed these out for our private community every single night, every single morning. So they understand why their assets are not performing well, why it's not a good time to be buying, you know, or selling. OK, yeah. so you, you understand that when you understand that power right now, what are we doing? We're buying. 
We're buying when everybody else is fearful because we know prices are at a discount. When the markets were pumping in May and we saw all this bad data coming out, I remember in the chat, in the Discord saying, guys, look, hey, we got dollar cost average positions possibly about to be met. And then as the market started pulling back in the private Discord, we got DCA positions hitting. We took some profits on Brett at like 18, 19 cents, whatever it hit just most recently. Like it's so active and it's so crazy to see. Now, look what happened in crypto market pulled back. Right. And dollar flip bullish today. If you go look at the dollar. <clears throat> on the intraday spectrum, on the intraday side of things, lower time frame, like four hour, eight hour dollar has been predominantly bullish all of June. Look at June. Here's the beginning of June. Just like in crypto, I showed you. June topped out for crypto at the same time dollar bottomed out. We flipped right. bullish. This was primarily because of NFP figures. Look at the charts. You see that? I got I had that on to you, on for you guys yesterday in the breakdown. We pulled back. This is where the FOMC release was, came out more hawkish. And then just most recently, we saw the upbeat and resilient data. We saw Neil Kashkari come out this week with a more hawkish tone, pushing back rate cuts. And we saw the optimism in the PMI figures this week. That's why dollar was strong. And that's why risk assets have been bearish. It, it like literally, look, it lines up. Nobody can argue this with me. This is These are fundamentals. And so if the decline continues, it's most likely going to be driven by geopolitical escalations and tensions driving more demand to safe haven assets like gold and the dollar. It's most likely going to be strong economic data or higher inflation figures from the U.S. And notice how at the same exact time on social media, what has everybody been talking about? De-dollarization, petrodollar agreement, dollar is going to fall. No, <laughs> no, that's so illogical. It's not even funny. Most people don't understand these fundamentals. And so most people are caught on the wrong side of the market. See here at Cyprex, we capitalize on all aspects of the market, not just technical analysis, not just <coughs> price predictions, not just research, everything. Yeah, that inverse correlation is deep, man. Super fundamentals, bro. Um, and we're buying the dip. I like this post from um, Arthur Hayes. He said to everybody, buy the dip. You know, zooming out, super bullish on crypto. Developments have been happening behind the scenes. Regulations are coming. Institutions are here. Literally going to be an explosive 2025. I think we're going to start to see small fireworks and some corrections possibly even more price fluctuations towards the end of this year as more regulations come in, but that's going to be obvious, of course, excuse me, um, you know, understandable. Um, we can't, I, like, I don't think people understand. I, I really still feel like we haven't even experienced mass pain yet. Like, what do you think is going to happen? Do you think it's going to be a mass liquidation that takes out a lot of people, a lot of players in the market, or do you think it's going to be slow and gradual? while we continue to trail to the upside probably slow and gradual because people are not patient you know what i mean they're not patient so i still feel like that slow and gradual will still shake them out but i don't know i could be completely wrong i mean i'm ready for whatever to be honest with you <laughs> so. yeah it doesn't really matter now if the market's bullish or bearish when you're in DeFi, you just kind of earn whenever i i try i told people the other day you know being open about my my you know what i'm going to start doing with my DeFi earnings and building a stablecoin portfolio i think in the new financial system <coughs> excuse me my throat's dry now i need some honey and tea if you can have five hundred thousand dollars a loan from a bank in a house that's not doing relatively anything for you but you can't have the confidence to possibly take that same size loan out Put it in a crypto and allow that to be working and earning you forty to sixty thousand dollars a year. Like that's what I plan on doing with the multi, multi, you know, like I'm just gonna, likewise. you know, six figure, multi six figure, multi seven figure portfolio that I plan on building in DeFi. It's like that's the it's almost as if DeFi at its full potential when everything is solidified is the end goal. Mm -hmm. like buying real estate in the digital realm 
like in the metaverse. And I, I say the digital realm because the metaverse, I don't think is going to be the end name for it. I mean, or maybe it is, you know, maybe it is. I don't know. But some of the documents that I read. You're breaking up, brother. Sometimes, but sometimes it's metaverse. Go ahead. <clears throat> um, I think in the future, too, it's going to come a point where you're just going to spend from the money that is cre like off of your yield, right? Like, no, there's not going to be checking and savings accounts in the future. Like I, that, like I can totally see that going completely away. Right. And again, like the way we, the way we, you know, um, partake in like exchanging and buying stuff, it's going to be straight from, and people may not, may or may not know this information as well. Right. Um, but they're going to be using DeFi, not understanding that they're using DeFi because it's just going to be so common. You know what I mean? So. Mm -hmm. It's definitely going to be a very interesting future that we're headed towards. I can't stress enough. Um, let's get into some of the growth because you posted out something on the X space that I wanted to capitalize on. I don't remember if I have the post. Oh, this gentleman right here. So we'll, we'll transition into some of the growth. Um, on X said, slow and steady increases in usage. Uh, it recently surpassed 7 million XRP pooled. I love to see that because, again, I've been trying to tell people about the possibility for you to go and leverage your digital asset XRP as a as a pair in a liquidity pool and earn yield on that. And I put the I put a post out on that today trying to educate people. People are just trolls on the Internet are so annoying, bro. They're like, well, <laughs> <laughs> why would you do that with your XRP? Yo, yo, shut the fuck up, bro. Uh, it's, not your, it's, it's not your XRP. And do you even watch what the you want to know why I leverage? I learned how to leverage my XRP because David Schwartz said it, you know, like, like, you don't have more credentials than David Schwartz, bro. So shut the fuck up, bro. You know, like, oh, trolls on the Internet are so stupid, you know, like, man, let me tell you what. I try not to let them get under my skin, but some people are just so ignorant. They don't even deserve the IQ or, or have the IQ, excuse me, to hold the digital asset XRP. Yeah, Man. they shouldn't even be holding yeah. it to be real. Facts. Not so. But this was a great post. Volume is also up quite significant from the last month. And this dude spot on. This this article has nothing to do or pertain with the XRPL, but it says which DeFi token will surge the highest after the ETH ETF. And I'm sitting here and everybody's distracted on these little tiny bullcrap tokens. And I'm sitting here like this, bro. When you posted, I keep asking the question, who hits 100K first? <laughs> Mag? Bitcoin or eat, bro. And I'm like, yo, <laughs> dude, Mag has been a sleeper this year. A super Nobody sleeper. About Mag. Zero, zilch. Like, bro, I feel like Mag is about, like, it's already doing crazy things right now. And then when I learned the tokenomics on this thing, I was like, even more. And that's why I'm putting out messages like that. Like, like I'm like, Orchestra yo, finance, um, Orchestra Finance just listed the Mag XRP pool too. Did, okay, yeah, yeah, I seen it up in there for sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah most most XRP holders. I said right here. I said um, Mag might be the most underrated asset this cycle that no one saw coming. CyperX members have been. If you go into our CyperX Discord in the private server, everybody's been tagging on this at this Mag XRP pool because it pays you out in Mag. And one dude was like, "Yo, I'm up 20k XRP, 20,000 XRP, just from joining the Wealth 28 Club." What? Hey, for real? That's for real? For out, real? Because <laughs> Mag, what? 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 Price? Hold on, hold on. I think they posted out. Oh, I said DeFi summer so far printing new all-time highs week after week after week. Yeah, XRP holders are just sitting there crying, bro, about their XRP. It's hilarious. Oh, here it is. Mag price is now over 5,000 XRP for one mag. We were on mag when it was 300. Yeah. 300. Yeah, we were. <laughs> $300 mag, bro. And, and then I read the white paper on mag, right? So keep this in mind. There's only 2,400 right now that's like available once that goes away the only way to get your hands on mag is you're gonna like, you have to mine it through and these liquidity, liquidity pools. pools yeah yeah and so that's, 
that's what I said full circle. Remember, and, and you said it on this call too, bro. Like everybody's going to be, everybody that's in crypto now that survives the next storm will be in DeFi eventually. Absolutely. Like if you're not, think about it. Like even if you just have stable coins on your wallets and they're not earning yield, what are you doing? You know? Like even just that aspect of DeFi, that's like the simple, most basic stuff. Like if you got a thousand dollars on your Coinbase wallet, but it's not earning you whatever APY they're offering for holding stable coins on their port on their platform, and that's just your liquid capital to deploy when the market pulls back. Like why not? What's stopping you? That's just a little tiny percentage that you can add to your DeFi portfolio. Man, you know, my goal in my goal in DeFi is that throughout the entirety of my portfolio, it's consistently making me a thousand percent per month. And that's 100 percent possible. If you add up all the percentages from all the different platforms that you can acquire, staking, liquid staking, liquidity providing, all of these lending, borrowing platforms. Again, it this is I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying it's just something that everybody can go out and master. It requires strategy. It requires planning. It, retire, it requires organization and it requires time, but it's possible. And, um, <laughs> and just think, think about the time you're giving out right now, just to piggyback that real quick. Think about the time you are giving right now. Like, wouldn't you rather give that time to yourself? And like, I love being able to wake up every day and just dive in deep and just study the entire space at my leisure. You know what I mean? I could like, like, but I made that, I made that choice long ago by grinding my way out of a situation to where now I make my own shit. So like y'all can do it too. Like y'all for sure just start little, little pieces of research every day and then it'll grow because then your income will grow from crypto and from DeFi. And then eventually you'll be free from the slave system come on yeah i just you know i don't i think we talked about this last on the last call i don't want to beat a dead horse but we mentioned that we don't think the aprs are going to stay elevated like they are now i completely agree with that i think that the more liquidity that comes into the markets the lower the aprs are going to throttle down because the incentives won't be as high for people to provide liquidity but still you know that falls back on why i think building a big portfolio now is so important important in your strategy towards investing in this space, not just buying and hodling, because the people that take advantage of growing and scaling their portfolios now that acquire multi six figure crypto portfolios or multi seven figure crypto portfolios will be able to deploy $100,000 into a 20%, 30%, 40% APR and still make a minimum wage salary per year because the 20 to 60 percentile range of aprs and apys i think is going to stay in DeFi. yeah but, but the the 500 600 700 800 percent aprs and apys i don't think that's going to stay as liquidity increases because the incentive won't be as high so anyways um that's just my personal opinion but that's why i stress now educating yourself i put out this entire piece educate yourself for the entire xrp community right now uh, you know, in the on the XRPL, that's my smallest DeFi position, but I still have a decent sized amount of capital deployed. I said, utilizing the new AMM feature on the XRPL as a liquidity provider, I am currently making about 50 to 75 XRP per day. And I plan to continue to grow this portfolio with the Cyprex Wealth 28 Club, making around uh, 150 to 200 XRP per day. That's my goal. That's my goal for the end of this year to achieve making. And I know I'll achieve that. That's you, you know me, bro. You know, I like the you know what I do with my goals. But um, <laughs> if I could, by the end of this year, constantly make 150 to 200 XRP per day, that would be an achievement of mine. And then I broke down little tiny steps on how to start to get interested in this. You know what providing liquidity is earning fees. This is all information that the vast amount of XRP enthusiasts that hold the digital asset don't even know exists. And there's people in the XR in the in the uh, XRP community right now that have recently gotten so sour about XRP. This is awesome. This is actually really cool. This is like as an XRP holder and seeing Ethereum thrive over the past consecutive couple of years, predominantly the last four, and seeing the DeFi ecosystem scale on Ethereum while we as XRP holders get absolutely destroyed. The bull market cycle in 2021, XRP was one of the only digital assets that didn't peak into a new all-time high. And it's like, I lived through all that. So taking advantage of this as an XRP holder since 2017 is freaking awesome. I, I, It's dope that the XRPL engineers and the individuals that you know are behind all of this, 
get, are giving us this opportunity. This is awesome. Like in my personal opinion, yeah, of course there's risks associated with it, but fudge. I mean, you already hold crypto. You're already inherently taking up risk by just getting involved in the riskiest asset class on the face of this planet. As of time of recording this video, why not expand your horizon the way that it's supposed to be expanded? Like we're not just here gambling. We're trying to find solid projects with solid teams and solid performances and what we think are going to be blue chip assets. And just like we did with our utility bags, we're doing that in DeFi. You know, you can Why build it. You can build a DeFi position with the blue chip assets that you most likely already hold. Like H bar, yo, saucer swap is popping when you get into what they're what they've been doing over the past couple of you know couple months. Yeah. And recent, yeah, like recent, like weeks too. Like they've they've been doing massive things in the DeFi section. They're one of the only DEXs out there right now, saucer swap, where you can go and provide one side of liquidity to your assets. Yeah, I'm not mad at that at all. So if you want to just go earn yield just on your H bar, you just you can go put H bar in a liquidity pool. You don't even have to provide the other pair, the um, pool. That's dope. Super. That's dope. Because if you got a million H bar, you know, you uh, again, not, fina that. not financial yeah. advice. You could take 250,000 of those H bar and go earn yield on it. Facts. Go earn 60 percent yield on it. I'm not telling you to go do that. I'm just saying that's an option if you look into it, you know. And, and, and to kind of answer maybe someone's, you know, question that they're like, well, what is he talking about? One sided liquidity, like most of these liquidity pools are pairs. So to get into the pool, you would have to have 50 percent of your money in this asset and then 50 percent of your money in that asset. So like, you know, for example, H bar, somebody that wants to get involved in the space that just wants to hold H bar and they want to hold the same amount that they got. And they don't want to, you know, take part of it and split it into 50% of like a stable coin. That's the that's the, the empowerment of what Cypress was just talking about. One side of liquidity is very, very powerful and it's going to be utilized for sure. Yeah. I um first off, real quick, shout out to everybody on the chat. You know, many blessings for you guys for tuning in. I cannot stress enough that. Right now, in the age of information, this these networking calls and joining on these Twitter discussions, and regardless if you watch our platforms or not, or whatever, maybe you're new here, now is the time for enlightenment. Now is the time for progress. Now is not the time for stagnation. Um, now is not the time to be non-active. <laughs> like, go look at what the financial institutions are doing. They're being active. Go look at, give me one second. I don't know why my thing is broken. No problem. <laughs> um, now is just the time to connect. Now is the time to expand and grow. So thank you guys for for tapping in. 826 people. Remember, we're going to be doing these every Friday. Um, I myself have some travel plans coming up soon. So maybe possibly next week we might skip that. But we've been doing these consistently for almost two and a half months now. And we're going to continue to grind. Um, shout out to the Wealth28 members if you guys are on the call. Um, the growth in the community has been absolutely outstanding, capitalizing on all of the things that we're trying to wake everybody else up on. So it's really been great to see growth in the community and the camaraderie and this the freaking power, man. Whoa, dude. Like <laughs> well, 28 club members are dope. There's been a lot of cool people and Camille's been doing those uh those podcasts with the community members. So it's been uh it's been cool to hear people's stories. Dude, and the communication, man, I swear we communicate like a championship basketball team up and down the basketball court. Like for reals, everyone is just constantly communicating. Even when I go to sleep, everyone's still communicating. I wake up and I'm like, damn, I got to catch up with everyone. Where, where are we at? What are we talking about today? Same, 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 same. Good stuff, man. Um, I want to give a shout out to Vandell. I love his stuff. He's been on the show before. A uh, great influencer, in my personal opinion, or, or researcher, however he classifies himself. Him and his brother both do good, deep research. Maybe not correct all the time, but in my personal opinion, one of the... Uh, individuals in this space that are trying to steer people in the right direction. I don't really know necessarily what direction he was trying to take with this, but I liked what he said. So I want to capitalize this and kind of put this into perspective through DeFi. Uh, he said the desire to get rich quickly is very powerful. I agree it can be uh, because it can set the seed of thought. The thought then allows you to you know, plan into fruition, 
or plan into action your small goals to reach that attainable goal. So obviously, of course, that's going to come with the desire, the belief, and the thought process to actually get rich quickly. But you got to be careful. Don't be greedy. You know, obviously, of course, there's a certain a certain uh, certain level of humility and humbleness you need to acquire if you want to get rich quickly because the market and anything, any endeavor in life, if you approach it too fast because you're cocky and you're arrogant, it will bite you in the butt. Um, and then he said, um, so was the fear of missing out, which I agree as well, because the fear of missing out sidelines you sometimes. Um, well, sorry, excuse me, not sidelines you, but makes you too aggressive. And uh, you end up making stupid, irrational decisions because you missed out, most likely buying tops, thinking that you're going to miss out on some massive opportunity, dumping too much money in, not assessing the risk properly, so on and so forth. But what I really like about this is when he goes on to say, many average retailer, uh, retail investors aren't thinking about investing correctly, not just in traditional markets, but especially in digital assets. So I want to encourage you all to ask yourself the question, are you really doing enough? Are you really doing enough to compete with other individuals like these congressmen and women who just publicly let the social medias that they govern tell us that they're investing in these digital assets. Do you understand how transformative that is? I know if, the, if you haven't been here for the since the beginning of this call, Mr. Aqua at the beginning showed you all that a congressman or whoever, all right, I don't know if it was a member of Congress or a previous member of Congress or who he was. I don't, I don't remember his credentials from what you read, but he just put 15 grand into Velodrome, which is a platform a decentralized exchange, digital asset that you can take your money and go and lend out in a liquidity pool and earn yield on that or APR, right? And Thanks. you have to understand that they've been doing this. They've been planning this. They've been testing this for the last three years. And they're just now, we're just now seeing public notice of this. We're seeing articles on Forbes about it. We're seeing them openly come out about their investments in crypto. That has not, that, that is all about the change. And so you just got to understand the opportunity. I, I encourage you all to rethink, are you approaching crypto properly or is there another way that you could be approaching crypto to enhance your current position? Okay. And like, for example, everybody has this idea, just let me take utility investors that they want to stack all this utility, all this utility, right? And they're most likely funding that dream, that thought of stacking all these utility assets with their hard earned income. Well, what if there's a way for you to do that through the market's money, through DeFi money, through lending out digital assets that you already have, earning yield on those digital assets, taking that yield, and then buying more assets? Again, if you do research, I'm here to enlighten you and let you know that that is a possibility. There's so many possibilities right now in crypto, Web3. DeFi is not the only niche. There's many others out. There's many other. There, you can literally go play video games right now and earn, right? Internet money is a thing. Stop thinking that it is not a thing because you don't know how to make it, okay? When you crack the code and you realize that you don't have to be the type of people that are suffering like the, look, I showed you guys the statistics, right? 50% of Americans think fast food is luxury. If you think that, that's garbage. Change that mindset. It all results back to the financial decisions that you're making. And how you're going to go about changing that. I showed you the documents from banks, from, from central banks telling you all that this is possible through a mobile connection. Right? I'm not, we're not making this up. I'm just showing, I'm just a relayer of information. And so I agree with Vandel when he said when he, when he says right here in the post, where'd it go? <clears throat> Are you making the right financial decisions in digital assets? And it's most likely that. Yeah, okay, you're you're investing in utility. I get that. You're hodling and that's been the mindset for the past 2 or 3 years, but this this technology's moving. And are you really moving with it or are you going to fall behind? That's the real question. Zoom out, see yourself 5 years from now. And I'm not telling you guys DeFi is the only niche to get involved in, but don't just think that payment cryptocurrencies are the know-all be-all and are going to be the end result in this market because they're not. This is going to be a multi-token world where central bank digital currencies, stable coins, and cryptocurrencies, along with other digital monies, whom they might exist now, they might not, are all going to coexist in the future. And it's not just going to be one to rule them all. Okay. So, you know, he said right here, I can assure that if you make good fun fundamental investments, they'll take care of themselves if you're patient, you know? So I'm assuming he was talking about buying utility assets and or just buying assets like gold, silver, any assets that are going to appreciate most likely over value to hedge against the depreciation of all the fiat currencies of the world.
But still, you know, what could you be doing to expand those bags to bags. 10, you know, to 10 extra bags now? And, and, and I would say this, too. I was talking about this on my TikTok live, you know, considering not financial advice. Right. But considering what we know about Bitcoin, if you can go back in time and if you you know, if you were one of the lucky ones and got super mega rich off Bitcoin, if you can go back in time, would you stake it to create more? You know what I mean? Like we, we hear all these moon boy numbers as far as like where XRP is going to go. And that's great. But like, OK, if you have conviction in that, why would you not want to at least earn one extra XRP every single month? Which is like you can do that with your eyes closed in DeFi right now. Yeah. So, you know, that's how I look at it. Don't look at everything so black and white. Everyone don't look at it like DeFi is like deploying your entire bag into DeFi. Look at it with like your logical mind and ask yourself like, all right, well, if I really have conviction in XRP and I think this is going to be a massive, you know, token in the future, you know, maybe I should take a hundred bucks and let this money just, you know, work and create more XRP. And I'm only really risking a hundred bucks. But again, I have conviction in XRP. You know what I mean? So I don't know. It's just just I, I want to put that out there because I, I always see so many like super emotional like comments too as far as like getting involved in DeFi. It's not your whole bag. Like start with a hundred bucks, start with 20, man, start with five bucks. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think that's one of the major things holding people back is, well, number one, the lack of education. You know, people like you always say, they hear these big words like in permanent loss. They don't fully understand them. And that keeps them sidelined. It's not time for that. Like if you're an adult, if you can wear big boy pants again, sorry for all the ladies, but you get what I'm saying. The, the analogy, right? OK, you put your big boy pants on and go read a document, go dig into it, go join a community, go educate yourself just like how you would if you were going to go be a doctor or go be a nurse or go be a um a physical fitness instructor you would take a course right you would pay for that course you would educate yourself to then go later on get a job and a career in that field off that education and implement that education properly it's the same thing with investing if you think if you don't think that that's a process you must go through to be a successful investor you will lose every time to somebody that does to somebody that pays for their education, to somebody that joins a course, that joins a community, to somebody that opens up a bank document, that watches a panel discussion, you will lose to them because the person that does those things will be the enlightened one, will be the one that has more information than you. And information is the game here. Data is the game here. The, purple, the person with the more data, the person with the more information, the person with the edge is the person that wins. And you can clearly tell the people in the Twitter comments and the troll section that are like, oh, blah, blah, blah. Those are the people that are fucked that are losing <laughs> yeah facts like that's why that's why i don't let it bother me because they're the people that are losing you go and you click on their profile and how many followers do they have how many call outs have they made how many fundamental breakdowns have they done how many times have they shown up in front of hundreds of people to display their price action for the world to see hey. probably none they have they have no credentials they're little they're little nothings and, and and those are the people that are swaying the minds of the masses to not get involved in stuff like this because yeah. you have these little you have these little tiny implants that are so scared and attached to the matrix they themselves and that's rubbing off on you you know so so don't be that type of person break out from your shell worst case scenario again you take calculated risk don't go out there I, please don't be the type of person and i hope that no, none of this has ever happened to somebody don't go out there paying thousands of dollars for mentorship programs that's why we charge 28 bucks ask any member of cyperx right now i guarantee you all, every single member of CyberX right now, I can say this with confidence, will say that we undercharge compared to the amount of information that we give. We And, and that is a fact, 100%. Right. And, and we did that on purpose to show people that to, to enlighten yourself properly with how we approach the markets here at CyberX, it's, you don't need to go and pay $20,000 for a mentorship. No, this is a like-minded community of normal, every average day people. People can't be affording that shit. What the heck? You get what I'm saying? But to give $28 for mine and Mr. Aqua's hard-earned time that we went, created this course, curated 75 step-by-step -step video breakdowns showing you how we are putting our capital on the line, inch by inch, breaking it down, taking our time to create this course, a community for you. Yeah, 28 bucks is, is, is reasonable, 100%. But the value that you're going to get from that, it's tenfold. Ask any CyperX member, guarantee you. Guarantee yeah. you. 
Yeah. We, I get new messages. I know you're getting them too every day as far as like, yo, thank you so much. I've already halfway through the, the university, the courses, and I'm already making XRP. I've been seeing a lot of people make XRP. They must be going in and watching the magnetic uh, video. Look, bro, I got, <laughs> um, I got, I don't really tell people I have this, but I have multiple folders of all the student reviews that I've gotten. And I love sometimes when I'm down, sometimes when I read crappy comments on the internet and I'm like, dang, that, that negative comment got me. I go in and I read some of these because man, let me tell you what, the fact that we have all this physical proof that we are freaking helping people is yeah. the greatest yeah. feeling ever, bro. Like I, <laughs> it is such a great feeling to it be is. one many, to be one of the many people on this earth that is actually making a difference to what degree we're making that difference at. I can't, you know. Okay, yeah, okay, it's only a couple hundred people, but man, it's so great to see the positive feedback in the Cyprex community to see these people flourish to some degree, whether it was mentally, physically, or through the markets, because there's so many different niches inside Cyprex that you can benefit from. But yes, it's yes. it is a immaculate feeling to just be a part of this network group, you know? Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, and, and we all vibrate. It's like this, this is a, a, a place where we all are on the same frequency. We're all vibrating the same. And if you find yourself as one of those people where you're like, man, I can't talk to anybody anymore around me about like, you know, the, 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 the different topics that I'm, you know, uh, listening to in these podcasts, like I try to talk about crypto with my friends and like, they don't even want to hear it. And I just hear all their emotional, you know, fear. And I'm just like, you know what I mean? Man, come join a club where everyone is like-minded. Everyone is always lifting each spirit, you know, lifting each other's spirits up. I mean, I've even got way more consistent with working out. I'm doing two a days now. Like Bro, I can't <laughs> wait to work out with you in person. This is gonna be so dope. No, I'm I look, I don't like the two mile norm, but I'm definitely getting into that Xgo platform. Um, earning Xgo to work out on your mobile device. Oh dang! Yeah, 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 yeah. When I go, when I go, when I jump ship, because I'm leaving, I'm leaving Cali in a couple of days. When okay. I jump ship, I'm a whole new setup. Oh, but bro, it's gonna be lit. I might, I might actually even start a separate YouTube just for working out, because my workouts go ham. And bro, I get a lot of messages. Go ahead. The X Go is the man. I got it, man. You're gonna have to educate me go some more on X Go. Damn. Go look, go check. Go, go just read, read, read a little bit about the website, bro. You can earn through the application xgo and it's from working out and i think that that's cool because you can take the xgo on the magdex and you can swap that for xrp let's go <laughs> yeah i'm telling you when i when i crack the code and i figure out how to work out to make xrp it's game over it's game <laughs> over. bro you're gonna be even more swole bro don't let that happen dude <laughs> i'm trying I'm to get out well, the whole entire Cyprex community been pumping out push-ups, freaking energy, dude. <laughs> Put where I push up push-up challenges in the Cyprex. That would be dope because what you what the app pretty much does is you get paid for competition with inside the app. So so I you know I haven't figured out how it works, but I'm assuming like you me and you both join a competition where I say, okay, we're gonna record ourselves doing a hundred push-ups. And the application via the video camera has like artificial intelligence technology to tell who which person is doing the better performance in the, in oh, the work and it and what i'm assuming is it like i said i got to read a little bit more on it but i yeah, think yeah. it pays yeah it pays the person that's doing the better job in exco in exco yeah yeah oh bro say yeah. less <laughs> it's crazy because when you when you go and you read on the website one of the things that it says in like its little mission statement and stuff is it says that this was all leapfrog or, or started accelerated by the, the pandemic when everybody was locked in their house. That's where the idea of having an application where you can earn and work out at the same time came from. Dang. That yeah, is bro, amazing. You know, David Schwartz was on his, um, I don't, I don't know what, where this was posted at. I don't know whose Twitter it was posted on, but David Schwartz was holding up a, um, a t-shirt with the Exco logo on it. That is so lit, bro. <laughs> And the, dude, man, yeah, I've been geeking out on the whole XRP ecosystem. I mean, we'll have to chat offline because I I'm still reading on certain topics too. But the metaverse, bro, is is gonna be huge, man. And XRP's like that, like XRP and what's what I'm seeing on the ecosystem as far as like the metaverse and what they're gonna be bringing to the table. 
man, I think there's going to be some major roles being played here, man. I don't know. Not, you know, <laughs> I think that people that were sleeping on XRP <clears throat> from 2020 till now are going to really regret it. Not because of the payment niche that XRP is involved in, that Ripple and, and XRP is involved in, not for, because of that, but because the XRPL has never really had a strong DeFi ecosystem like Ethereum or Solana or, you know, all these other chains have had. And that's all about the change over the next three years. And that alone within itself, in my personal opinion, is going to is one of the super bullish factors for the digital asset XRP. And yeah. I think yeah. people that, that leverage that right now by understanding that it's David Schwartz. Let me tell you all something. OK, <laughs> I love that people will follow David Schwartz riddles on the internet but will not actually listen to what the man says hey that part say that again bro because you exactly. said man i heard you say that in one of your videos i was like yo <laughs> david schwartz david schwartz at xrp las vegas this shit blew my mind when he said this right and i remember because this is when you and i first started like really getting into mag like we were like all right we got to get some mag we gotta we gotta well, we gotta look we gotta buckle down we were like shit bro yo what <laughs> this is crazy. because yeah. i remember yeah, I, I know that you and I, myself and other researchers, when we hear these little tiny like 30 second clips and we're like, yo, what the f did they just say? Yeah. They reports at XRP Las Vegas. This will never go unnoticed. And I will keep reminding people this because this was like it was the one of the first panels where he said this. You know, uh huh. And I almost think it was that way on purpose, because remember, everybody likes the riddles. I know that David Swartz plans his speeches and he also under he, he's very strategic with when he drops information. Absolutely. I haven't heard a, I haven't heard a panel discussion from before that day where David Swartz openly says you can take your digital assets XRP lend them out in a liquidity pool and you can benefit from being a liquidity provider. He said that to the entire crowd. And I remember that day going and looking at the farmers on the magnetic decks and we were at like 155. Yeah. There wasn't many at all. And the APRs were actually way juicier than what they are they right were, now bro, they were, they were five, the five six hundred percent do you remember when we first got involved in the decks and yeah bro <laughs> i remember telling that to you and i was like bro this this just launched april 30th yeah what it what? throttled down so much like yeah it's and a, and yeah, go, go ahead i just no, i was just gonna say too because like you, you know a, something that's been sticking with me that david george said is he said this verbatim he said get into DeFi right now before the institutions do yeah right yeah. so like what uh, look bro there's 13 1300 people there might be more people on our live right now than there are farmers right now on the magnetic deck still even though it's grown quite a bit you know what i mean no, I, but, think there's, I think there's 1300 active farmers now across all the positions but still can you imagine how how much mag is going to be when that numbers when that number reaches ten thousand people I active farmers? Yo, I I, did, I just scared myself. Oh my god! Oh my god, bro! How much is mag right now? It's worth two. How much is it? Twenty five hundred, bro. It's worth two thousand five hundred dollars right now, right? Okay, so if there's a one thousand three hundred active farmers right now on on mag, and mag is worth twenty five hundred. What would that make the price at 10,000 active farmers, bro? Holy, sh that's definitely an easy, an easy six or seven X from where we're currently sitting I at. I swear to God, bro. I am like, yeah, bro. Yes. Are, we are we unlocking things right now? We're unlocking these thoughts. These are the real price predictions. You see with math and like logic. Yeah. Like why, why could the asset go up? Just, I don't think people, most people in the XRP community don't even know that mag is the number five digital asset on the XRPL right now. Like I know. They don't even, I, dude. And I'm kind of curious too to know what happens when the real USD coin drops, and then we see it as an option here, uh, here on Mag, because you know that's coming. You know that's for show sure coming. Like what? That's. I think that that might be when institutions come in because yeah. they're going to use. They're going to want to use a stable coin, and you know what's even crazier is Marcus Emfinger said the other day that they're going to utilize. The stable coin alongside the digital asset xrp i showed people that and if you and and oh yo hold on i just had a freaking moment check this out i just put two and two together marcus Emfinger said the other day 
that they're going to utilize the Ripple stablecoin alongside the digital asset XRP. And then in the same sentence, the lady was questioning him about DeFi and what he was excited about. And he mentioned DeFi and DEXs and the new AMM feature. And he talked about, I shared this video. Let me, let me I'm going to pull Dang. it up. <laughs> and he talked about how you can go and you can lend out your XRP. Now I'm seeing what he said. Using the stablecoin alongside the digital asset XRP, bro. What if what if that's in a liquidity pool? Exactly. That's what he's referring to. Is exactly what he's oh, referring man. to. Y'all gotta wake up, people. Man, yeah. this stuff is so exciting, dude. I'm so happy to be a part of this. And you know what's even crazier is I'll just say this one last thing. It's yeah. it's a better feeling knowing what risk I'm taking because I haven't touched any of my long-term bags. So the entire DeFi portfolio I'm building right now, I could care less if it went to zero because it has nothing to do with my long-term bags. That's the power of building a DeFi strategy. And I've talked about this in the in the Wealth28 Club. Is a reason why I'm so um, adamant and confident and aggressive with what I'm doing is because I don't. I got my XRP that I've been holding since 2017. I'll never touch it. But now when, when I'm DCAing into XRP, you, bet, you better believe that XRP is earning me yield. 100. I've, I've, I've been waiting for this long. I've been holding XRP for this long. XRP holders deserve this. 100% they do. And yo, like this is something else too I'm thinking about right now. Like David Short says to get in before the major institutions. He said that literally a week and a half ago. Now, with, with these institutions that are going to be moving and grooving their money regardless they're moving this money based on like doing things that we don't need to know about but they're moving money here and there so if these people are going to be moving money anyways why would they not take some of their other liquidity to deploy into these pools and make money off of their transfers that they're making to bring their margins lower like, like i i think it's, um it's Okay, so here's the video of Marcus Simfinger saying that they're going <coughs> to use the, hold on, let me share my screen, that they're going to use the digital asset alongside the digital asset XRP. And then I'm going to show you the clip after where he talks about DeFi and lending your XRP, just to show you guys I'm not making this up. And then I, I think that that's probably going to go down in history is one of the realest quotes that any XRP enthusiast or holder has said on the internet. We deserve this as XRP holders. Think about it. Just think about it for a second. ETHgate, right? All this stuff about Ethereum and all that, right? And you just saw that SEC pretty much gave Ethereum another free pla free pass, right? That's tre that's trending right now on the internet. Think about it. For the past four years on Ethereum, you've been able to go out and create more Ethereum out of thin air by being a liquidity provider, by lending out your Ethereum, by liquid staking, by staking your Ethereum, by all these things, right? Thanks. Thanks. Now, obviously, of course, the XRPL doesn't have a staking feature, but for now, for the first time ever, you, the manual retail investor, can go and take your XRP just like you could four years ago on Ethereum. You could take your Ethereum, or not four years ago, uh, to what is it? To what did Uniswap drop? 2021, maybe I think. Yeah. I don't remember. Okay, so 2021, you could take your Ethereum, you could go put it in a liquidity pool, and you could literally generate more Ethereum out of thin air. We right. as XRP right. holders have never had that opportunity. So, of course, everybody's confused. What the f is going on? Oh my gosh, in permanent loss. I don't want to do DeFi because we've never had it. Exactly. We've never had. What, like, do y'all understand? We've never had it as XRP holders. This is all new. This is all, this is happening. We're showing you this live freaking a thousand people on the magnetic decks earning yield right now on XRP. That's peanuts, people. That's peanuts. Peanuts. <laughs> Orchestra Finance just just for, for the first time ever just um, uh, dropped the mag XRP uh, pool on their platform. And what was David Schwartz talking about? Orchestra Finance at Apex. If you go look at the slide that he presented at the Apex, that he just recently presented, it says orchestra finance on it. 100 percent it is. 100. So, you know, this is this is big. And 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 there's gonna be a certain set of people just like that hold Ethereum that participate and those that don't, just like an XRP. There's gonna be people that hold XRP that participate in the DeFi ecosystem and people that don't. It's just different requirements, different strategies, different approaches. But I'm not I'm not buying any more XRP moving forward. And just putting it in my cold storage wallet. That's that wet way of thinking is dead. Any XRP that I buy from this moment moving forward is going to be making me freaking money because the XR <laughs> we earn it. Like we, if you held XRP through all the trials and tribulations, and you've been holding XRP for the past couple of years, you earned it. Like you earned this reward. This this reward. In, in right. my personal opinion, one hundred percent. And if you're here right now, you're ahead of everybody else because you have awareness now of what your asset can do for you.
you know, this entire time you've been hodling, it hasn't done much for you, but now you can get yield on it. Like, yo. And then when the thing does go to places, think about it. I mean, do you really want to sell? Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> nah, man. I mean, can you imagine if we are correct and these digital assets do reach significantly higher prices? You know, you're going to be a multimillionaire. You're going to already have tested DeFi. So you're going to know the ins and outs. You're going to know a good strategy around it because you tested it with micro amounts before you became a multimillionaire. And you're going to have all these people that become millionaires in crypto and go get back in the traditional financial system. They're going to buy real world physical assets like real estate and all these things instead of moving into the digital realm of things and understanding that $500,000 in traditional finance earns you nothing compared to DeFi. If if I I know a person right now, a multi multi millionaire in crypto, he's I don't want to say a family member, but in a sense, he's a family member. He's married to somebody in my family, but we don't have a good really a really good relationship. He's in the process right now of liquidating his multi million dollar real estate portfolio because his multi it, I think I'd say off the top of my head, it's probably worth like three point five million dollars, right? Three point five million dollars in real estate he has, and it's earning him like. Seven thousand dollars per month. What? <laughs> You're if he, he, bro, if he took half of that, now I don't know where he messed up or why it's making him that much, but he yeah. said that much. You know, whatever. He, he said that if he took even a quarter of that money after selling all his real estate and putting yeah. it into some of the DeFi positions that I've shown that were in here, CyberX and whatnot, he said that he'd be making well over thirty to fifty thousand dollars minimum per month. Yeah, man. Are you, yes, bro. And now is the time. Now and and, the time. and 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 <laughs> and notice I said he's not putting all his millions into this. Again, just an allocation, just like exactly. any smart, just like any smart investor would. Like Mr. Aqua said, we're not. I'm not sitting here trying to convince you to go and put all your XRP in. But she, you better believe, if I'm still dollar cost averaging to XRP right now, and or any digital asset for that matter, my long term bags are packed. I'm good. I've been stacking for years. I'm ready to earn now, like pay, you know, like I don't Back. understand why people don't have that mentality. Like, I'm hungry. I want to grow, you know, anyways. So, yeah, man. Oh, <laughs> uh, let me, let me, right here. you got something you're going to share right here. Yeah. Let me play these two clips. We got sidetracked. Marcus and finger, ladies and gentlemen, what, what specific, what? I don't remember what role he plays at ripple off the top of my head, but he is a, uh, he plays a, a high end role at ripple. Specific to your stable coin yes. that can be applicable to global audience. Yeah, so I would say two use case categories that we're most excited about. Mm -hmm. First of all, uh, we plan to leverage the Ripple stablecoin alongside XRP in cross-border payments in our existing real-world cross-border payment product. Um, alongside coin, alongside XRP. To global audience. Yeah, so I would say two use case categories that we're most excited about. Mm -hmm. First of all, uh, we plan to leverage the Ripple stablecoin alongside XRP. In All right. So he says we plan to use the Ripple stablecoin alongside the digital asset XRP, right? And then I put two and two together. I was like, hmm, okay. And then that same, because I cut the video off. But then I realized just now while we were talking, what I think he was talking about were low key is using it in a DeFi pool. Not to that exact point. No, no, you just use the word right now too because take it back right before he said that. He said keyword well, use case. Gonna, yeah. Use yeah, case so is like I, so here I, I got another video. Hold on, bro. I'm gonna show you because I, I forgot that last week I cut the video off a little bit, but the video was at the end, him actually saying that this is possible. So hold on, let me find it real quick. But go ahead. It's, he's not talking about a use case and putting it in a cold wallet. Think about it. <laughs> no, 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 he's not. Hold on. Let me. I'm, I got to find the video because I know I freaking posted it. I posted one of him and David Swartz saying it at the same exact time. Let me find it. But yeah, I, it's it's nuts, man. What's happening? It's absolutely insane. Here it is. Look, I knew I freaking posted. I remember my post, bro. I put in time and effort into teach trying to teach people about this stuff. All right, check it out. <clears throat> Hold on. Let me share a screen. Share this tab instead. From XRP Ledger, what's on your roadmap? Yeah, so there's uh, some amazing stuff happening. So first of all, uh, an automated market maker has been uh, released uh, very recently and uh, voted in by the community. That one is going live 
uh, which will obviously also be na a native feature on the protocol, which brings more security and user safety uh, and allows users to basically, you know, uh, put, put their liquidity to work. Boom, right there. And, and you know, look how he said it so nonchalantly. And, and you know, allow users to put their liquidity to work. Exactly. Like, if I was, this is why, this is why we need to go to these events. I can't wait till for 2025 after I get this move over with bro, because 2025, I'm trying to go to these events because what is this reporter thinking? If I was there and this, and, and Marcus Enfinger said that to me, I'd be like, hold on, hold on, Marcus, hold on. Backtrack one more. <laughs> what did, what did you just say, bro? Did you just, did you just, yo, that, that Marcus, dap me up real quick. Did you just say that we can lend out our XRP? Hold on. And Where make that... money and put it to use. What are you talking about? Okay. Why? It's like it's like these people at these crypto conferences are zombies. They're afraid to ask the right questions. Yo, if we went up in these conferences, oh man, I'd have the whole Cyprex team up in there digesting everything, bro. <laughs> Oh man, let me tell you what. Because I've seen the CyberX team on on the back end, and what we find. Imagine if we're at these conferences, mic'd up, bro. Oh, it's um, coming. I just put some information. <laughs> Next year's gonna yeah. be massive for us, bro. Because I'm right there with you. We're pulling up to all these events, all of them. Percent, hundred percent, especially the ones in in, in Texas. Man. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I, that's all I got for today. We've been on the call for too long. I'm, we, you know, we can't be the dead horse. Can't, can't, <laughs> can't show people any more than what we showed in today's video breakdown. Lots of stuff. Appreciate you guys. One thousand seventy-two people. Really do appreciate you guys for coming out. Cannot stress enough. Make sure that if you're my follower, you go out, you follow Mr. Aqua, vice versa. If you're Mr. Aquas, go ahead and give your boy a follow. I really Absolutely. appreciate it. Um. If you guys are interested in any of the stuff we're talking about and you want to join a like-minded community, again, we're not here to convince you. The community is there for you if you want to come in. We'd love to have you. I honestly don't know what number we're going to top it off at and cut access to the general public, but I think eventually that day is coming. But so with that being said, grab yourself a seat, get yourself educated, tap into the information that we have to provide. Uh, you know, I can't stress enough now in the age of information is the time to tap in. Hopefully in today's video breakdown that showed that to you. Um, I can't stress enough. You yeah. Know? Yeah. That's enough. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Appreciate you everybody for coming out. We'll see you guys next Friday. Much <laughs> love, everybody.